Hi everyone. Welcome to Jube School Live Online. My name is Karen and I am the Cultural Development Specialist at the Jubilee Auditorium. We are absolutely thrilled to be able to bring you Jube School Live and online. Hi, uh, my name is Carly McKee. I'm the Community Engagement Coordinator here at the Jube. We're so excited to have all of you here on our YouTube live feed here with Mandy Stobo. Uh, let's just get right to it. Allow me to introduce to you visual artist, Jube School artist, all around fantastic human, Mandy Stobo. Mandy, take uh, it away. Thank you so much. Uh, well, welcome everyone. I'm so happy you're here. Uh, Jube School is one of my favorite things in the world. So I, I just feel so very blessed that I get to be here and teach you guys some bad portrait techniques today. I know uh, it's been a bit of a weird time. It's been a bit of a hard time. And I know that art is very therapeutic and also is very fun. So we're gonna, we're gonna have some fun. We're gonna explore some feelings and we're gonna make some bad portraits. So before I tell you a bit about myself, I wanna kind of go over the supplies that you guys will need. And while I, while I tell you a bit about my story, you can run around and try and find them. So what we will need is some paint, watercolor paints. If you don't have watercolor paints, that's okay. You can use pencil crayons or crayons or any kind of coloring that you have at home. We also need the best tool in the world, a Sharpie and we're gonna need some paper. So that's gonna be for your portraits. And then for the, for the projects before we do our special portrait, we're gonna need one object. I'm gonna use a box, but you can use anything in your house that you can find. And then the next one, I'm gonna use a bear. So a stuffed animal, if you've got that kicking around, would be great to find. If not, just something with a bit more complex shape. So that's kind of all you guys are gonna need. So my name is Mandy Stobo. I'm a visual artist. I am the creator of Bad Portraits. I do a lot of large contemporary paintings. I do a lot of work in virtual reality and augmented reality. I am a performer, an illustrator, and I work a lot in design. So how did I get here? Well, it was kind of a lot like where we are right now. I was very young and I had a baby and I didn't really have anything else. <laughs> so. There's my little guy. I didn't have a job. I didn't have much of a, any education. I had a lot of life experience. I had gone through a lot of awful things that taught me a lot of lessons, but I didn't really know what I was gonna do. So the world was my oyster, right? No, not at all. This was more my reality. No bees, no honey, no work, no money. But like a, a situation like we're in right now, I wanted to really create something. So I, I started a list and I, I started to think of what I did have. So what I did have was safety and I hope that all of you have safety. And if not, we are here for you at Jube School. So reach out and I had optimism and I had an idea to just create and make something for my family. So I started thinking about art and I really, I didn't, I wasn't very good at being precious with my art. I liked it to be just kind of raw. And I found this, and this is the three laws of art. One, create, the worst it can do is suck. Two, create again, bad art happens to good artists. And three, just create. Art is cheaper than therapy. So anytime you guys are bored right now or don't know what to do, I suggest strongly just grab a piece of paper and start doodling, you will feel better in a minute. So at the same time, I was making some paintings that were pretty, pretty dark and angsty. And I just, I really didn't want to put that out into the world. I wanted to see if I could highlight joy and happiness in art instead of just these moody, sad kind of works. So this was kind of where I was before I started thinking about how can I put value in joy and humor? So art should comfort the disturbed and disturb the comfortable. I was like, I don't know if that's kind of where I want to go with things. I really want to see if I can spread smiles and, and just inspire anyone to create. So at the same time that this was happening, a wonderful thing called Twitter just came out and it was brand new. So timing was very lucky. And I thought, oh my gosh, I'm a single mom. I don't really have a community, but I do have this tool. And on Twitter, you can connect to anyone. So I started looking at Twitter and seeing what all these Twitter accounts were doing and trying to figure out what I could do with it. 
And what I realized was that all of these social media platforms had profile pictures. And so I started stealing profile pictures from anyone I thought was doing great things in the world or funny things or kind things just to try and do a portrait of them and send it back to them as a thank you. And that's the beginning of Bad Portraits. So I called it Bad Portraits because a few reasons. If I said it was bad, it kind of lowered the pressure on my end, but I'd also lowered the pressure on the face that I was drawing. I really, really believe that our flaws or what we think are our flaws are actually our beauty. And so I wanted to really highlight that in my work. So I started stealing them from anyone that I was thought I I loved or thought was just incredible and and started doing a lot of celebrities and Tina Fey and all of that and then one day I decided to do Adam Sandberg uh, from or Andy Sandberg from The Lonely Island so I kind of I sent him this and I said you know here's bad portrait time I think you guys are doing great great things um, here's a bad portrait for you and he immediately sent me back cool but where's Kip which was his other member of his band Lonely Island and so for some reason I had 45 minutes, my son was sleeping and, and I could actually make a portrait. So I immediately made him one of all three of them. And I said, bad portrait time, here he is, sorry about that. And then I also sent him another of Kiv and also 17 others of just Kiv. And so he started retweeting that and kind of sharing it with the world. And very soon after I started getting orders from around the world, from celebrities that I loved and started getting into national magazines and and all kinds of things and uh, Maclean's in Canada did an article on this phenomenon that was happening on Twitter and by that Christmas I had over 3,000 orders and I could provide for my little guy so I know that we're all in a very weird spot right now with uh, with everything that's happening in the world but I want to just really share today that anything is possible and that we have this time right now to really create and be exactly what we want to be. So let's let's try and do that. So I'll just show you a few more of these moments that Bad Portraits has taken me. So there's our wonderful Mary Nenshi. There's Tom Cochran. I think you guys know this guy. We see him every day at 11. <laughs> And then recently I was able to do the Canada's Walk of Fame with some wonderful uh, celebrities, wonderful Canadians. That's Will Arnett, Alessia Cara, and there's um, Marc Messier. And re most recently I've been able to honor our incredible leaders during this pandemic. Um, all of our wonderful, wonderful chief uh, medical officers across Canada, thank you so much for everything you're doing. It has been such an honor to be able to create for you. So. There's a bit of my background. Who wants to create some art? And we're gonna get our Sharpie out. So as you can see, here's my hands, here's all my supplies. We're gonna grab a Sharpie here, and we're gonna first do the object that we found in our house. I'm gonna pick this box, just to kind of give you guys the, the for a little rundown of rules for bad portraits. So with contour drawing, there's two rules. You have to look at your object, and not look at your page, and you have to keep your pen on the page. So because you're looking at the object, as your eyes move across the object, your hand is drawing the shape. And because you're doing that with your eyes, you're actually helping your brain change its pathways a bit. So anytime you're feeling anxiety or stress or anything at all, this is a really good exercise to do. I really, really can't tell you how, how helpful it's been for me. And, and it's fun too, so let's get to it. So as you can see, we've got our paper and our pen and our object. So just like I told you before, we're gonna take those rules. I'm only gonna look at this box and I'm not gonna look at the page and the pen will not lift off the page. So I'm gonna start on the corner of the box and as my eye moves down the box, I'm gonna move my hand. So as you can see, I'm not really looking. I'm gonna go over to the side and it's looking exactly like a perfect box, right? But I didn't lift my pen. So as you guys can see, it's all one continuous line. The next step for bad portraits is you see all these little overlapping shapes that you've made with your continuous line. 
you're going to just pick a few of those and color them in with a Sharpie. So I'm just, and you can do cross hatching or any kind of patterns that you would like just to bring out your drawing, make it a little bit unique for you. So there you go. That's kind of what I'm going to do with that box. Now, the third step to bad portraits is the paint. So I want to talk to you guys about complementary colors. Complementary colors are the best. They're, they're like having the best friend in the world. They bring out the best in each other. So that's what we're going to play with for our first one. We're going to pick one pair of complementary colors and we're going to paint our box or our object and see how the colors interact. So for those that do know, complementary colors are the opposite colors on the color wheel. And so the, the pairs are purple and yellow, red and green, and blue and orange. Let me show you here. So I want you guys to pick one of these pairs, red and green, orange and blue, or yellow and purple. So we're gonna get a bunch of paint on our brush here. And I'm gonna pick orange and blue because I just love it so much. So then we're gonna start to paint. I like to paint on the edges uh, with one color and get a lot of pigment on my brush and then kind of wash it in. You see that? And then I'm gonna do the same with the, the complementary color. So I like to get a lot of pigment there just so you can kind of blend the wash on the inside. And now a wash just means you're adding more water to your brush and blending the, the water or the color. Okay, so now the fourth step is splatter. It's my favorite step. It's the most fun. If you have kids with a lot of energy, it's an amazing thing to do. Watercolor comes out of everything. There's nothing to be worried about. Give them a piece of paper and some watercolor and let them go at her. So all you do is you take a bunch of paint on your brush and you wanna hold it up and kind of just tap it. Now I love splatter because I really believe that it takes your energy and it puts it in on the page in a different way. So each of our splatter is unique just like each of our lines are unique. So we're gonna talk a bit more about that in a bit, about how my mark making is different than your mark making, and that's what makes it beautiful, and that's where the truth is, and that's where the value is. And so the more that you can let go with who you are and just let yourself make your mark, the more, the more truth is there, and the more value and beauty is there. And it's, it's just my favorite thing to see. So there you go, that's our first project. Now doesn't that look like a cool abstract painting? If that was on a very large canvas, I think we would all be very impressed. So there's number one. So now we're gonna go to number two. So I want you guys to grab your stuffed animal or whatever your complex object is. So we're gonna just try that again before we get to our self-portrait. So we're gonna do the same thing that we did with the box. So I'm, I like to start at the top of the head, even, especially when I'm doing people, but I start at the top of the head and as my eye moves around their ear, into their nose and eye and around and up and then down, my hand is, is moving as my eye follows the shapes. So that's what we're gonna do right now. So I'm gonna start at the top of the head and a good way to use your whole page is by starting at the top and, go, and being bold. Don't be scared of making large lines. So I'm gonna start up here and I'm not looking at my object. So I'm gonna go, I'm looking at his ear, or I'm not looking at the page in it. So I'm looking at his ear. Oh, I'm gonna go up into his nose. And as you can see, I'm not lifting my pen and he's looking like exactly like a stuffed animal there. <laughs> right guys? I wanna see yours too. So now I'm going down into his scarf. He's got a stripe on his scarf, but I can't even tell if my stripes are on his scarf. And that's okay, guys, because this is all about letting go and finding your marks. How cool is it that we're all just such beautiful individuals? And the other thing about this COVID that I've been thinking about is that we're all going through it together, but we're all having such unique experiences. And how interesting is that? So I think I forgot his eyes, so I'm gonna go back up, but I'm not sure. So there you go. There's my contour quick drawing of a bear. So as you can see, 
It's perfect. No, I'm just kidding. It's not perfect at all. So, but it does use the whole page. That's what we want. And it, I never lifted the pen. So there's tons of these overlapping shapes everywhere. You see? So again, the second step to bad portraits is finding those shapes and filling them in. I like to start with the eyes because it brings them a little bit to life. And then I can talk to them and sing lullabies. No, just kidding. <laughs> I want to hear how you guys are doing too. So please leave some comments about, you know, what's been going on in your life since, uh, since this has changed. And I really want to see your drawings. I can't wait to see what you guys do. And I really, really cannot suggest enough to keep contour drawing anytime you're feeling like your feelings are out of control or life is, is too hard at the moment. Just grab an object closest to you, grab a pen, grab a piece of paper, and just do this exercise a few times. And I promise you, you will feel a lot better. So as you can see, I'm just filling in some of those overlapping uh, shapes that my line has made. And it really just brings out the drawing. So we're going to just go in here. All right. So now for this one, I want you guys to think about one of your complementary color pairs. And I want you to introduce one more color. Now, the reason why we're not going crazy with color right away is because I just want you guys to take a moment and see how color plays with each other. Every time you introduce a new color into anything, just like, you know, just like life, it changes it quite a lot. And it changes the feeling of the piece and kind of uh, everything about it. So I just love you know, it's all experimenting with color and, and really seeing how that relationship works. So I want you guys to pick one of these pairs again and then introduce a, a third color. So now we're gonna paint our bear. So we're gonna grab those three colors. I'm gonna do a bit of purple and yellow and red, I think. So we're just gonna get a lot of pigment on our brush. I sure like painting with you guys. But please, while you're doing this, we want to see at Jube School everything that you're doing. So send everything to Jube School if you can. So as you can see, I'm getting a lot of pigment on my brush. I like to go to the edges. And then I kind of just wash, wash it in. So I'm going to introduce red to this painting just to see the red and the yellow. So as you can see, it's a totally different vibe than yellow and purple. And I just think that's so cool that just introducing one tiny change like that can change your work. So there you go, you got a lot of, so these are the fast and dirty bad portraits. This is just to get us loosened up and ready for our self portrait. So as you can see, if you don't have paint and you can do this with crayon and uh, any art supplies that you do have, you won't be able to splatter very easily, but that's okay. We can leave that for later. So then you want to take the paint on your brush and splatter away. My little guy's looking a little concerned, but that's totally okay too. <laughs> so there you go. If you do get pooling of water, it's totally okay to take a paper towel and dab it a little bit. It doesn't wreck the painting. It just removes that water. So as you can see, we've done two now, and we're very close to being ready for our self-portrait. Before we begin this, I really want you guys, while you're doing your self-portrait, to really think about what's important to you, what things you are learning right now, what things you're feeling right now, and really just inject that into your painting because 
it's going to feel so good to get that out and put a lot of love into yourself. So we're going to do that next. Okay. Is everybody ready for that? So I just took this selfie. There you go. You can see it a little bit, right? So I'm going to use this for my bad portrait. Now, before we start that, I want to kind of show you guys what I do with the, with the faces if you don't want to use the continuous line. Now, my, my worry about doing this is that it puts you in a space where you want to think too much and then you want it to be perfect. That's not what we want to do. We really, really, really want to just let our, our lines and our mark making out so that we can see it and see, you know, that authentic piece of ourselves that maybe we don't get to see all the time. So if I'm doing a portrait, I usually cut it into different sections. So I'll do the continuous line in this area and in this hair area. Then I'll move down and do the continuous line in this area just so I can see that the sections are going together. So I'll show you guys a quick example of that. So this is a wonderful teacher in Calgary. I don't know if any of you know, but there you go, you can see him. So if I were to break it down into sections, I would break it down into the hat to the forehead and then the eyes to the nose and then underneath. So I'll show you very quickly what that looks like. So as you're getting ready for your self portrait, finding that picture that you really love. So as you see, I did the hat, one continuous line, and then I'm gonna go down into his glasses and his eyes. So as I go into his eyes, I'm just following his nose and over. I'm still not looking at the page because I want that authentic line. So there you go, and then go up into his eyebrows and kind of up there. And there, there's another section. So then you're gonna build your face kind of like that. So let's get our self portraits ready. If this is your first time doing this, I really, really suggest you keep the continuous line. For me, it's become a little more muscle memory because I've done so many of them. But if you keep trying with that continuous line, you're really gonna like excavate what your true original lines are and that my favorite thing about that is just nobody else has that yours is different than mine and mine is different than yours and and the beauty in that line is so spectacular and and so that's kind of what we're trying to cultivate here so again we're just going to start at the top of the head we're going to go down oh my pen just kind of flipped <laughs> And we're gonna go all the way over and then I'm gonna move to the other side. So it's obvious, it's not precious. We're kind of just throwing our energy in there. I do see my ear poking out, so I'm gonna just quickly put that in. When you do get into the second step, you really can define those shapes and really bring out what you want. So now we're gonna go down into the forehead and I'm gonna move over into the eye. So I know that some of us, it's really hard to look at ourselves. I know that I still make a weird face every time I look in the mirror. <laughs> but I really suggest us, you know, deciding to change that a little bit over this time. We are all so exceptional and we have so much capacity and magic and beauty and wonder in us all. And I really, I just really wish that people could see that when they looked in the reflection instead of things that they don't think that they like. Because all of those things are making you unique and nobody else can take that, you know? So I think that's a really special thing. So as you can see, we're going all the way down. And I think if we do this again, guys, we will do a workshop where I show you without the continuous line. But this is definitely the fundamentals to. Uh, the bad portraits. So as you can see, I'm not lifting my pen at all. And I'm just kind of going, as I follow my eyes on the page, I'm going, or I'm moving my wrist. And so then we go down and then we're gonna go up. I think I need a little bit more hair on this side. So we'll just kind of do that. And there's kind of the fast and dirty of, of my self portrait. So now with step two, I'm going to go in and I'm going to start coloring in those shapes. So, and I know, 
some of us are think it's a mistake if it's not perfect or if it's not even if one eye is here and one eye is here but that's that's the character that's what's so beautiful so so just bear with me and keep it and if you want to keep working on it just keep trying one every day it's a great way to kind of have a bit of meditation and it's a great way to explore your own marks you know so we're going to keep going on here just going to make sure oh someone so someone has asked why a sharpie I was in a place where I always felt like I had one foot here and one foot was like holding me back. So I decided what I'm scared of most is doing portraits, uh, using watercolor and using something permanent that you can't erase just so that I could get comfortable with my marks. And so I knew that I couldn't, you know, erase it and, and turn away from it. I had to face it and discover what I loved about it. So that's why Sharpie. I love Sharpies. I think we should try and do most of our drawings in Sharpies because it just forces that safety net to not be there. And you can really start seeing what your creations are. Um, I love bringing out the eyes. There's something about the eyes that makes, like really makes it come to life. So I usually do that first. So just in case the drawing is like, waiting to come alive i've uh, i've given them their life um so there you go we're just gonna fill in a little bit more of these i really like the the lines and the cross cross hatching and i also love the solid color but i've seen lots of artists and students do like dots polka dots and cross hatches and all kinds of patterns and it really is interesting so don't feel like you you can't do any of those things. You can do any of them. Someone is asking if I will teach a jube school online this summer. And I think, well, if this is what we are doing together, I would love to, you guys. I hope a bunch of my students are on that line right now. I miss all my girls. I miss you guys. So if you are there, please send me a note and send jube school your pictures. Mandy, what is your favorite TV show? Oh, you guys, that is a tough one. So my five-year-old's favorite TV show right now is Boss Baby Back in Business. My teenager's favorite TV show right now is Clone Troopers. My favorite TV show, it's terrible, but I keep re-watching Friends over and over. <laughs> I have a bit of a crush on Ross and his jokes. <laughs> so anytime I need... Any kind of laughter I throw on friends. Um, what kind of paint is your favorite paint? Well, this is a tough question. So there's a lot of great, beautiful watercolor paint out there. I come from the idea that uh, use what you have and use what you can. So if you don't have a lot of money or you don't have a lot of supplies, that's okay. Create with whatever you can find. Don't go out there and buy really expensive things until you know what you like. I loved the Crayola ones. The sad thing about the Crayola ones is they, they lose their pigment in the sun, but their color is so fun to play with. So if you are working with kids and you just really want to play with color, the Crayola ones are inexpensive and they're great to use. So now we're gonna paint. And so now I want you guys to really just express yourself in any way you want. I am. Um, I used to be really against using like beiges or browns or any of those kind of colors, but uh, use what you like. Like this is all about your expression. So what I like to do is I like to take some of my favorite color and put it in those areas where the shadows are on your face. So I'll show you guys here. So like when here and here and the edges of your face and under your lip and under your nose. There's a lot of shadow areas. So we're gonna just do that with this, my favorite, favorite color. It's like an orangey red. And I just think it just pops, really brings out really unique feeling, I think. I love it. So as you can see, I'm just kind of going along the edges and where those, those shadows would be. So there's gonna be a shadow under your lip 
there's gonna be a shadow by your nose and there's gonna be those shadows on the edges and also on your ears. So there you go. So then I love to play with kind of yellows and reds too. So we're gonna do one side with some yellow and really blend it in with that orange and red. Okay, we got some more questions. Where do you find inspiration to create? Well, for me, I, there is so much inspiration out there. I, uh, I have gone through a lot of things in my life and I, because of it, I have a thing called PTSD. And so art for me became kind of my therapy and my friend. And so the good thing about bad portraits for me was when I didn't know what, what to paint, because I felt like I, I just didn't know what I wanted to paint or like what my subject should be. There's an endless amount of beautiful and great people in the world. And so I thought that was a perfect thing for me because not only do they inspire me as a person, but they also inspire me for content. And then from there, I started just painting what I felt. So I, I have these contemporary paintings and these landscapes, and I just had never really seen a lot of Alberta landscapes in a contemporary abstract way. So that was really inspiring for me. And then I think just anything that gets you excited, if it's animals, if it's just color, just abstract color, just anything that, that you're attracted to, just start playing. There's no, there is no hurt in playing and trying to find your real, what you really love, you know? And it can change. It can change always. And that's good. And another question, do I have a YouTube channel? I don't have a YouTube channel, but I am in the works of a YouTube channel. So uh, I have a craft every day. And I also have on my website, I have coloring pages for your kids every day too. Um, because I know being a mom and working full time, it's pretty tough to... Um, to balance that out. So I have a ton of content for all of you teachers and parents out there that just need, um, you know, a little bit of extra projects for your kids to have fun with, to learn some neat things with and to be inspired by. So head over to Stovo Art and you can find all those there. I will tell Jube School as soon as my YouTube channel is open uh, what it is and you guys can find it there. But if you guys want to ever ask me any questions or send me any of your art, please send, send it to Jube School or at Bad Portraits on Instagram and I, can, I will get back to you right away. So here's another question. My kids want me to say you're really good at this and they like your portraits. Aw, thanks guys. Well, I can't wait to see yours. So I really wanted to show you with this one that we're using the entire page that it was one continuous line and that it's, you know, it's not perfect, but it's, there's beauty there. And, and I just really, really encourage you all to, you know, remember that you're full of, you're full of that. And that is the coolest thing about us all. So as you can see, I've got some bleeding here. So I'm just going to tap that because I still want to see the face. And then I'm just going to put some, I think, some burgundy in, the, in my shirt just to contrast it with the blue. And then, you guys, what's next? It's splatter. Oh, here's another question. How can we use pencil crayons? Our teacher said we can use them. Okay. So with pencil crayons, guys, you're just going to do the same kind of thing with the color. So just take a darker color and put it in those shadow areas. And then you want where the light hits you, so in the forehead and on the cheeks, and right here above the eyes, and a little bit here and on the chin, that's where the light is gonna hit. So you wanna pick a color in your pencil crayons that are a little bit lighter. So you're gonna put the lighter colors here and here and here, and the darker colors along the edges and by the nose. And then you just don't worry about splatter at this point. So you just wanna shade in those pencil crayons And, 
And, and then you'll still get your beautiful marks out of that. It's just not gonna look like the paint, but pencil crayons are perfectly good to use. And I love them because you can really, really use shade well with them. So I really wanna see those pencil crayons ones. Okay, another question. What is the longest time you've drawn with one line? Oh, that's a great question. So back in 2012, Calgary was the cultural capital of Canada. And I had the honor of going to Ottawa on Canada Day and painting a mural on Parliament Hill. And so for that mural, I did one long continuous line of multiple portraits and it took me 12 hours. So that was definitely a wonderful experience and a very neat experiment. So that's another place to find inspiration too. It's like, think of these experiments and try them. Why not? If you're bored or you wanna find some inspiration, just start playing around and seeing what you can find. So then I'm gonna just take that orange that I love so much. We're gonna splatter a little bit more. If you get splatter on areas that you don't want it, want it you can just grab it with some paper towel, no problem. I like to leave it because you know it happened in the moment and I, I'm that kind of girl. So there you guys go. We're almost done here. So there is my self-portrait, one continuous line. I hope you guys really, really enjoy it. I'll send uh, I'll send a picture once it dries to Jube School, but you can take a look at that. So with that, another thing for the pencil crayons though, if you want to cross hatch, so let's uh, let's see if I have a pencil crayon kicking around. I don't, but if you want to cross hatch, so you want to like get the, you can get texture if you go one way and then go the other way on top, and then you get a different bit of texture. So you guys will just experiment with those crayons. Oh, and the last thing you all have to do is sign your name. That is your art and it is worth so much. So I hope you had a great time at Jube School. Thank you guys so much for doing this with me. This was so fun and I can't wait to see everything that you're doing. Jube School!